and welcome to the Sunrise Theater. TCPalm.com is proud to bring you the best night in Treasure Coast sports. Featuring special guest, Doug Flutie. And now, it's time for the TC Palm Sports Awards. Please welcome to the stage, president and publisher of Treasure Coast Newspapers, Bob Brunches. Well, good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? A lot of energy in this room. I, I want to welcome everybody to the second annual TC Palm Sports Awards. And uh, hey, can we give it up for these athletes right here for being here tonight? Let's hear it for them. Come on, let's go. Let me be one of the first to congratulate all of you that made it here this evening. I know you put a lot of hard work and dedication into this past season, and we're here to recognize those efforts tonight. And, you, you know, um, everybody's a winner who's here tonight, okay? And so congratulations. But, yeah, you can do that. But before we kick this off, really what I want to do is I, I want to thank our sponsors because uh, we've had some folks in the community step up to make this evening possible. Uh, first, Jetsons TV and Appliance. Want to thank them for stepping up in a big way. How about those TVs out in the lobby, huh? Uh, we've also had uh, Florida Atlantic University, Florida Power and Light, Caldwell Banker Paradise. I know they're here this evening with us. Harbor Community Bank, uh, the St. Lucie Mets. I guess Tim Tebow is coming to Port St. Lucie, huh? Treasure Coast Sports Commission, uh, nice Air, GHO, GHO Homes, and the St. Lucie County Schools. So give our sponsors a big, a big round of applause. Well, I tell you what, I was here last year for the awards. There's a lot of energy in this room here tonight. I'm looking forward to all the recognition, looking forward to what, uh, I know you all got a chance to hear from Doug just a little bit ago, right? And a dynamic, dynamic speaker, but to really get this thing going in the right way, what I want to do is I want to introduce our MC for the evening. He's our sports editor, and I got to tell you, this whole sports awards has been a labor of love uh, for Mike Graham and a lot of the folks that he worked with. You'll meet a lot of those folks tonight, but would you give Mike Graham, our sports editor, a warm Treasure Coast welcome? Mike, come on out. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for coming tonight. We're really excited to give these awards away, and we want to get right to it. We don't want to listen to me talk too much, but I do want to say if our athletes are out here and they're on Snapchat or Twitter, remember that hashtag TC Palm uh, to use, and TC Preps on me, and if you're Snapchatting, uh, we've got a filter set up for the show, so please feel free to work that way too. I'm going to go through the show real quick. Uh, we talked about the Treasure Coast Sports Commission. They're great friends of ours, and we're glad to have them back this year to give the academic side of our awards. Uh, Doug Flutie, we mentioned Doug's going to come out. Great guy. Met him before the show. Uh, we've got our own quarterback here, Rich Campbell. He's going to do the Q&A with Doug. Then we're going to give out our player awards, and we've got some new ones this year. We've got a premier award, I Am Sport. We're going to give a couple of coaches awards. And then we're going to finish up with our player of the year. It's been a great year here. It's been a lot of fun being the sports editor and watching all these great athletes. I can remember back in the fall that Vero Beach and Sebastian River had great football teams, and we had some other good teams too. Uh, Caleb Potteroff won a gold medal in cross country. And how about those South Fork girls volleyball team? What about that? Hey. In the winter, we didn't have any gold medal winners, but we had a lot of good teams. We had the Vero Beach Boys soccer team make it to state. I know Wyatt and Kirk, Kirk, uh, Kirkham are here, the wrestlers from Jensen Beach. They were silver medalists. Uh, Kendra Mathis and Alicia Scarlett were silver medalists. And uh, we had the girls from South Fork. The soccer team made it all the way to the regional final, as did the girls from Vero Beach, as did the girls basketball. And in the spring, my gosh, it's been a gold rush. Uh, these track athletes here, Caleb Potteroff, Drez Parks, uh, Kushan Watson, all double gold medal winners at track. And uh, Chase Highland was another gold medal winner. And uh, who can forget that John Carroll softball team? What an effort they gave. So 
Let's get going with these awards. I'd like to bring out Rick Hatcher, the executive director of the Treasure Coast Sports Commission. He's a great friend of ours. He's a great partner in this, and he helped us bring Doug Flutie tonight. Rick, thank you very much. Take it away. Thank you, Mike. And thank you to Bob Runges and Rick Baxter with the TC Palm. The Treasure Coast Sports Commission is once again excited to be part of this special night to recognize outstanding student athletes along the Treasure Coast. On behalf of the Treasure Coast Sports Commission, our president, Joe DeRoss, our board of directors, it is my pleasure once again, along with the TC Palm, for presenting the best of the best of the high school sports here on the Treasure Coast region. About four years ago, the Treasure Coast Sports Commission started a, a student athlete recognized for their scholar academics as well as the on the field accolades. Tonight, we are excited to recognize both a male and a female athlete from each school. And there's a total of 18 schools represented tonight from both the public and the private sector. From in Indian River County, St. Lucie County, Martin County, and Okeechobee County. Tonight, each athlete that receives a TCSC Scholar Athlete Award will receive a plaque that reads, in recognition of your achievements as a student athlete who demonstrated success in the classroom, strong leadership skills, strength of character, good sportsmanship, while also serving as a role model for others on and off the field. Once again, the Treasure Coast Sports Commission is honored to have as our presenting sponsor for tonight's evening and the awards for our Student Athlete of the Year, Florida Power and Light. Please take a short watch of this video right now. Around here, it takes several sources of energy to bring you energy. There's natural gas, nuclear, solar, and something else. There has to be. Where does the vision come from to go green before it's fashionable? What fueled our drive to reduce our dependence on foreign oil in 2001? And where do you mine the courage to stand up to those who don't share our American values? The commitment to knock down old power plants and build cleaner, more efficient ones. And what powers the pride to be an energy leader for Florida and for America? How do you do that and still provide a bill that's among the lowest in the nation? You must have a source of energy. That's pretty darn special. Florida Power and Light. Now it's my honor to bring out Amy Brunges and Bart Gettins from Florida Power and Light. Good evening. Boy, I'm excited to be here. This is our second year in a row. I'm pumped. Are you pumped? Come on. Come on, let's get excited. All right. All right, on behalf of Florida Power and Light, it's an honor to be here with all of you and my colleague, Amy Brunges, and to be a sponsor for the second year in a row of the Treasure Coast Sports Commission Student Athlete of the Year Award. As you just watched, we are dedicated to bringing you our customers with reliable, clean, and affordable energy. We are bringing four new solar sites to the Treasure Coast area, which will provide power to 60,000 homes, something we're really excited about. At FPL, we are all committed to the communities in which we live and work. And now I'm going to turn the microphone over to Amy to say a few words, but before I do, I just wanna take this time to congratulate each of the athletes in here, something that you've done that which is outstanding, and I, I'm very honored to be before you tonight, so thank you very much, Amy. Thank you, Bart. As you heard Bart say, you know, we're, we are dedicated to our community, to education, and to, um, to our, uh, our schools. And so this was a natural fit for us to partner with TC Palm and the Treasure Coast Sports Commission 
uh, to other uh, community-minded, world-class organizations on the Treasure Coast. You know, most of you here are our customers, and you rely on us to keep the lights on in your classrooms and in the fields and uh, in the gyms so that you can do what you do. And it's, a, it's an honor to be able to do it, to make our communities a better place for our, our customers to live, work, and play. But tonight belongs to all of you, and so I just want to uh, echo Bart's comments about how proud we are of all of you. Congratulations. This is your night. You're our future, and we're really excited to recognize you. So thank you for allowing us that opportunity. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Bart. And thank uh, FPNL for the continued support of this great night, and as well as the Treasure Coast Sports Commission. Now, are we ready? Need more speeches? Let's get to the awards. Okay. It's my pleasure to introduce Michael Stutsky. Michael is a former athletic director of Sebastian River High School, and he's the current vice president for the Treasure Coast Sports Commission, and we'll get this award ceremony started. Michael? Thank you, Rick. Good evening. On behalf of the Treasure Coast Sports Commission and its board of directors, it is once again our pleasure to recognize the Treasure Coast Scholar Athletes. The selection of these very special individuals is made by an outstanding group of professionals who guide their respective high school's athletic programs, the school's athletic directors. The countless hours of dedicated service places them in a unique position to observe and evaluate student athletes. At this time, we will ask our athletic directors when their name is called to please stand so that we might recognize you with a round of applause for a job well done. From Okeechobee High School, Kenny Buckner. <laughs> Treasure Coast High School, Dan Como. Lincoln Park Academy, Jill Corey. Jensen Beach High School's RJ Costello. From Martin County High School, Mark Cowles. Port Pierce Central High School's Pete Crespo. From Masters Academy, Bob Fleming. From South Fork High School, Ed Geiger. From Vero Beach High School, Lenny Jankowski. From St. Edward School, Jeff Lampshire. From Port St. Lucie High School, Brandon North. From John Carroll Catholic High School, Dan Rame. From Centennial High School, Steve Ripley. From the Pine School, Matt Seffarelli. From Morningside Academy, Rusty Smith. From Sebastian River High School, Jessica Upchurch. From Port Pierce Westwood High School, Jill Willett. And from Community Christian, Josh Zekman. Nice round of applause for all of these, please. This year's Treasure Coast Sports Commission scholarship athletes are as follows, and we start in the north end of the Treasure Coast and work our way south. Young ladies, of course, being named first. From Sebastian River High School, Sierra Ritchie. Male athlete, Raheem Lane. Congratulations. From Vero Beach High School, Chloe Schlitt and Travante Reed. From Masters Academy, Caitlin Cutshall and Jacob Bardwell. From St. Edward's School, 
Alex Hagler, and Desmond Hagler. Alex Marshall. There we go. From St. Lucie County, out of Fort Pierce Westwood, Alma Garcia and Alejandro Mendoza. From Fort Pierce Central, Anaya Coffey and Seth Ingersoll. Lincoln Park Academy, Natalie Baumgarten and Caleb Potteroff. From John Carroll, Allison Rosakis and Michael Peterson. From Port St. Lucie High School, Gloria Vauder and Demetrius Webster. From St. Lucie West Centennial, Deborah Velasquez and Matthew Beers. Treasure Coast High School, Caitlin McHugh and Devin James. From Morningside Academy, Victoria Crawford and Trenton Martin. Martin County, out of Jensen Beach High School, Alana Strauss and Sam Oliver. Jensen Beach. From Martin County, Elizabeth Moberg and Will Ross. From South Fork High School, Kendarley Duperit and Connor Kalinske. From the Pine School, Annalise Romero, Clark Mortel. From Community Christian School, Sandra Rojas and Nate LeBlanc. And from Okeechobee County, Rayleigh Coleman and Daniel Shelley.
Let's have a nice round of applause for our Treasure Coast Scholar Athletes. This year, the Treasure Coast Sports Commission is pleased to honor a couple of outstanding coaches. Each spring, a dedicated group of coaches in the emerging sports of interscholastic rowing and rugby assemble on the waterways and the athletic fields throughout the Treasure Coast. Their numbers representing area high schools are growing. And between the two sports, almost 300 high school student athletes now participate. With almost $2 million being awarded in college and university scholarships during the past decade, these two sports are making an impact on the Treasure Coast. The Treasure Coast Sports Commission is pleased to recognize this evening the pioneering efforts of the coaches and their respective schools or organizations for their effort in promoting emerging interscholastic sports with a plaque that reads, in recognition of your vision of promoting the emerging sport of boys and girls interscholastic rowing, and in the case of rugby, boys and girls interscholastic rugby, your hard work and team success is appreciated and respected along the Treasure Coast. In the sport of boys and girls rowing, the following coaches. Tolly Allen of Intrepid Rowing, and if Tolly isn't here, if her assistant is here, please come up. Aaron Lee of St. Edward's School and accepting on behalf of Aaron is St. Edward's Athletic Director, Jeff Lamsha. Stephanie Faulkner of the Treasure Coast Rowing Club. Gary Mara of Vero Beach High School. And Tom Lang of Sebastian River High School. and Alan Dobson of the Treasure Coast Rugby Foundation. Alan Dobson. Please give the coaches and programs of emerging interscholastic competition for boys and girls a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And again, another round of applause for all the scholar athletes that are in the room. Thank you. We know it's not uh, always easy to support our athletes. And our special recognition goes out to the parents and the adults that help guide our young athletes because this is our future. So applaud for your parents, please. <laughs> now let's get started. I think you're, you're through with our awards. I think you guys are tired of hearing from me. So let's bring on the show right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, and congratulations to all our Treasure Coast Sports Commission winners. I'm going to give a quick mention to those sponsors again. Jetsons, Florida Power and Light, Florida Atlantic University, the Owls, Harbor Community Bank, Caldwell Bankers Paradise, the St. Lucie Mets. I'm wondering when Tim Tebow is going to show up around here. Treasure Coast Sports Commission, Nissa Air, GHL Homes, 
Sunrise Theater and St. Lucie Public Schools. Okay, let's get Doug Flutie out here and see what he has to say. And to introduce our guest speaker tonight, I'd like to bring out the editor of TC Palm, Adam Neal. Thanks, Mike. I have the pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. Doug Flutie is a professional football player. He played in both the USFL, the CFL, and the NFL. He was a quarterback for the Chicago Bears, the Buffalo Bills, San Diego Chargers, and New England Patriots. In 1984, he was the Heisman Trophy winner while at Boston College. He was part of one of the most memorable plays in college history, and it has been dubbed the Miracle in Miami, where he threw a 65-yard Hail Mary touchdown pass in the final seconds of the game to beat the Hurricanes 47 to 45. Doug's been busy since retiring professional football in 2006. He's been a college football analyst for ESPN and ABC. He's the current color commentator for Notre Dame football and NBC. You might have caught him last year doing a little bit of Dancing with the Stars on ABC. Please put your hands together and welcome Doug Flutie. Real nice of you. Why don't we just forget about the Dancing with the Stars bit, all right? Holy mac, Dancing with the Stars. Those people are crazy. You watch it, I mean, it's popular. Everybody, most of the adults are watching it. The kids, I don't know if you guys watch Dancing with the Stars. But it's one big family. They have fun, but there are no boundaries out there. My daughter's a dancer, so she's got no boundaries either. Um, I am, those of you that don't know, I am local. I live up in Melbourne Beach. I grew up in Melbourne Beach, but my, most of my career was up north. I lived up north for years. And my first football experience in Brevard County was, I, I went over to Vero Beach to watch a high school football game. Mel High must have been playing down there. We were Melbourne. And it was, the game ended, and my brothers and I grab a ball, and we're, I'm about seven, eight years old, throwing a ball around, running around. And these bigger, because we saw bigger kids doing it. And I'm catching the ball, throwing the ball. Two big kids just come down, run down, put their shoulder into me, light me up, and send me in the next week. And that's my experience with Vero, all right? So, and you see, was Sebastian River High School? Where's Sebastian River High School? The Sebastian River is no joke. All right, I was on jet skis this week. I went over Sebastian River, taking my nephew and his buddy down there, right? And I'm going idle speed because you're, you're not allowed to go fast down there. So I'm going idle, 10 foot gator rises up like five feet away from me. I hit it and I go, yeah, that's the last time I go down Sebastian River. But I'm surfing, I'm dealing with sharks on that side. You got gators on this side, moccasins in the canals. So I wonder the kids live down here. Uh, okay, I grew up in Melbourne Beach. I'm a local kid. I, I came from absolutely nothing. And this is, you know, when I see, and I, I had a chance to talk to the kids in the back room, and, you know, I say this in all honesty. I played 21 years of professional football, Heisman Trophy career at Boston College, all that stuff. I'd trade with places with you guys in a heartbeat to have the chance to do it again. It's, it's the thrill of the journey. The journey is what it's all about. You've got to be motivated. You've got to go after it. It's, it's something that you don't realize is going on. As, if you have your focus and your head down and going, you don't realize it's going on until 10 years go by. You look back and say, hey, that was a blast. I was a kid living in Melbourne Beach. We had no money. We got phones ringing up front. Honestly, you know, my dad got paid every two weeks, and we knew when the paycheck was coming because we didn't eat the last two days. You had cars repossessed. You had electricity turned off. Back in that day, not everybody had a credit card, so you couldn't build up debt. You know, you just got through the two weeks and waited. My brother and I would collect, back in the day, you could collect Coke bottles, cash them in for five cents a piece, and that would... That's how we got our lunch money. And I could not imagine, you know, I knew my dad made probably about ten to $15,000 a year back in that day, 
And I remember how the heck, I was eight, nine years old thinking, how am I going to earn a living? And in the back of my mind, I did not want, I, I, since I was eight or nine years old, I did not want my life to go in that direction where I didn't know where the next meal was coming from. And it drove, it, it was the motivation on a daily basis. I talked to the kids about, there's got to be something that makes you, on an everyday basis, want to get better and fight towards your goals. And that was the first one. And it kept me motivated. I don't care. It was through Little League. It was through Pop Warner football. I played over on the beach side, right? I had a bunch of surfer dudes on my team that couldn't catch, couldn't throw. And we'd go over to West Melbourne, and we'd get our tails kicked. I mean, those kids were tough. Go up to Patrick Air Force Base. I mean, we didn't have a chance. So you took a beating. And I, I was actually, for Pop Warner football, I was underweight. I was 63 pounds, and you had to weigh 68 pounds. And as long as they put the scale on the maximum weight, I was good. But if I checked it, my dad always had like a five-pound weight with him that I'd shove underneath my thigh pads when we weighed in. If, if they were checking for minimum weight. <laughs> and you just, I got some laughs coming over on the back side. Um, you know, you just, it was that important to me. I wanted to play. I, I remember, and there's something about it, and I was also saying to the kids that Muhammad Ali had a quote where champions aren't made in the gym. It's from your will. It's from something inside you that motivates you and drives you. And for some reason, I had that at that young age. I remember in Little League having a, a playoff game that went extra innings. We had to continue it the next day. And we, my buddies and I got up in the morning, went down pitch batting practice to each other for like an hour, dripping wet with sweat because we were coming up one, two, three. We got up. I hit the first pitch in the right center for a double. The next pitch, a guy hits it up the middle, game over. Because it was more important to us than it was to other people. And I've always had that drive. I always had the ability to want to prepare. I was so afraid of failure that you propel your tail off. And it wasn't me. I didn't do it. Yes, Tom Brady won the Super Bowl again. I'm sorry. It's what he does. I'm a New England Patriots fan. I'm sorry. I, it just... The, Tom, Tom's pretty amazing, all right? Well, okay, we'll skip over a part. We'll go to leadership. You talk about a leader. Leadership to me is doing what is right all the time, doing what is beneficial to the entire group all the time and not caring who gets the credit. Being able to speak up to your buddies and say you're doing it wrong, it's time to do it the right way. It's not getting... So many guys get in the locker room and they start yelling and screaming and they think they're a leader. It's not about the guy that gets up and is the loudest. It's about the guy that does things the right way and encourages the others to jump on board and do things the right way. I spent one year around Tom Brady. One year. The hardest working guy I've ever been around. I played with and I love Drew Brees to death. Drew is a great quarterback and Drew's probably the number two guy. But um, Drew, Jim McMahon, I've, I, I can go through a list of Hall of Fame quarterbacks that I've played with. And you get around Tom, it's different. The competitive level, the willingness, the guy's making a ridiculous amount of money. His wife makes more. But he's the first one in in the locker room. He's the last one home. He makes the guy, he makes the guy who didn't even practice that week that's got a bad ankle and getting at the training, in the training room, feel like he made him better that week. You know, the guy that runs scout team, he makes the guys on the scout team play harder. And there's this infectious attitude around Tom that makes everybody rise to his level because he won't settle for anything less than your best. And that's the person you want to be. You want to be the one that elevates the play of everyone around you. That I always describe Tom as an intellectual that plays football. You know, most of us get five minutes to ourselves. Everybody throws the headphones on, listen to a little music, uh, maybe a video game or something. 
Tom read a book in the locker. Tom's got the book. I'm like, who are you? Tom would show up. Tom and I would go in and work out at 6 a.m. before our 7.15 meeting, right? In order to do that, I got to leave the house at 5.30. I roll out of bed, throw on a sweats t-shirt, no shoes, get there, and then I get changed into workout gear. Tom walks in the locker room at 6 a.m. immaculately dressed. Cashmere sweaters, pashminas, you name it. Who is this guy? He just, he, he's that, that far ahead of all of us. Um, I had a chance to play with him, play with Bill Belichick as uh, my head coach for that last year. And, uh, you know, Bill was the same way as far as leadership. He had a knack for involving the entire team and keeping everyone involved. I was 43 years old at the time, guys. I, I went from San Diego to New England to try to win. I, I'm a New England guy, so I wanted to get home so my daughter could go to her senior year of high school uh, at, you know, with all her friends and finish the whole thing there, as well as cheerlead for Tom Brady and hope he wins me a Super Bowl wearing before I retire, right? So I get there, and, and like I said, Tom making you feel good. They were, we were watching film, and I, I think we were playing Indianapolis that week, and they were running a two-deep coverage that they really shouldn't be running in the area of the field that they ran it because it, it was too tight. They couldn't get to the ball in the corner, and I kind of mentioned it to Tom in passing, and you know, nothing he didn't already know anyway. And in the game, Tom's in the middle of a two-minute offense, gets down around the 15-yard line, checks to this play, pump fakes a safety, throws the corner of the end zone, touchdown. He runs, makes a beeline for me on the sideline and says, that's your touchdown. You called it. He's, all he's doing is making me feel good because he knew what he was doing all on his own. And that's the way he is. He has a knack for involving everyone. And that's, Bill Belichick did the same thing for me. My very last professional game, we're playing the Dolphins up in New England. We love playing Dolphins because we always beat the Dolphins. You, you, you might, <laughs> might, I'm kidding. I had a real good record against it. The only game I ever lost, to the, I think I was like eight or nine and oh against the Dolphins, but I lost the playoff game I played against the Dolphins. What are you gonna do? Um, but I did throw for like almost 400 yards. I had a good day. So anyway, what I'm saying is Bill Belichick had a knack for getting guys involved. And I did absolutely nothing all year long. I was a cheerleader, had the pom-poms out, rooting for Tom Brady, let's go Tom. One day, Chris Berman happened to be, uh, uh, the last play of my professional career anyway, Bill got me involved by letting me do a drop kick against the Dolphins that day. It's something that hadn't been done since 1941, uh, instead of having a holder for a field goal or extra point. And Chris Berman came to practice one day, I guess had told Bill he had seen me messing around doing it, that I could drop kick. So it was after practice, I'm coming in, and Bill, Bill's assistant calls me into his office. And when his assistant says, hey, coach wants to see you, it's not usually good news, all right? Get your playbook, kid, you're going home. So I walk in, I go, okay, and Bill's sitting at his desk, and Chris Berman is sitting behind him, just beaming, smiling away. And uh, Chris, but Chris had told him that I could drop kick. And coach looks at me, he goes, hey, can you drop kick? I go, yeah. What, what do you mean? He goes, can you do it? I go, yeah. He goes, well, work on it. We're going to practice it tomorrow. I go, are you serious? He goes, yeah. We're, it hasn't been done a long, long time. I'd love to do it, blah, blah, blah. He goes, is it still legal? I go, I don't know. I just mess around doing it. He's like, you leave. So we look it up. It's still legal. So I practice a little bit. We are going to do it against the Jets on a Monday night game. Ended up not working out. We're playing the Dolphins. Meaningless game. The number three quarterback is Matt Castle at the time. And he starts Matt instead of me because they want to rest Tom, but they got to find out if the kid can play or not. So I was kind of pissed that it was going to be my last hurrah. That's not happening. Now I'm 43 years old, stiff as a board, 20 degrees out, windy, cold. And I just, this was how, I, for four hours, I stood there like this. All right, we're down by two scores, five minutes to go in the game, we're on the five yard line going in. I happen to be standing next to Bill. He looks over, he goes, we score here, you're kicking it. He didn't get the sentence out of his mouth and we were in the end zone. I go, you kidding me? He goes, no, go kick it. I ripped the jacket off, I grab a ball from an equipment guy and I kick one up into the stands. I wanted to see if I pulled a hamstring, I don't know, whatever. 
So he's like, go kick it. So I jog out there. I jog out. Now these guys have won Super Bowls. Tom's an MVP. All this stuff's gone on already. They're like a bunch of little kids at Christmas, jumping up and down. We're going to do this trick play thing that hadn't been done in a long, long time. We're gonna, I go, I guess we're doing this. So we line up, and I kind of shift back from a shotgun to a real, real deep shotgun. And the Dolphins call a timeout. I'm like, thank God. Get me off the field. We're done, right? So I start walking up. The whole sideline is waving me back. And I get back to the huddle. I go, I guess we're going to really do this. And now I haven't stretched. So I'm doing the old man trying, doing the old man stretch in front of the huddle. And the guy's going, so our long snapper is Lonnie Paxson. Lonnie weighs about 225. But he's the long snapper. You're not allowed to hit the long snapper. But we're not kicking. We're going for two here. Keith Trailer's a nose guard at 320 over his nose. He's like, Trailer said he's going to kick my ass. He's like, what the? He's like, what's Flutie doing in the game? I'm going to, you know, I said, hey, tell him to chill out. Tell him what we're doing. Just say, hey, don't rush. So, so he's up there. We break the huddle. We go to the line of scrimmage. We have a rookie wide receiver lined up well wide on Sam Madison. And Sam's like, you're running the fade, aren't you? He's like, no, 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 not running. Watch the slant. Watch the slant. No, no, no. Check this out. This is going to be cool. Watch this. Right, right? So all these conversations are going on up front. So in the meantime, my wife is in the stands, knowing this is the last play of my career. And if I miss it, she's got to live with me. So I shift back and shotgun, snaps the ball. I get the ball. I drop it, I hit it, I hit it solid, I knew it was good. I turn around, do a little fist pump. I turn around, our offensive line's running, we just won the Super Bowl. These guys, it's a meaningless extra point, right? These guys, we're going nuts, we're having fun. We, we go, go to the sideline, uh, Keith trailer, I guess Lonnie had the little conversation with him, Keith didn't hit him, everything was cool there. So I head to the sideline, I'm gonna go give Bill Belichick a hug, right? Bill's. Bill's the guy that let me do this. It, it hadn't been done a long time. Um, in fact, Lonnie, when he snapped the ball, Keith's over his nose, and, and Keith just grabbed him at first, and he stepped through. Zach Thomas is the middle linebacker, right? Zach's reading. He's watching Lonnie. He's, he thinks it's a two-point conversion. He steps up, looks at Lonnie. What the f was that? Lonnie looked him straight in the eye, no lie. He said, that's a drop kick, mother. Hadn't been done since 1941. And we ran to the sideline. So I'm running to the sideline. <laughs> I'm running to the sideline, and I go right for Bill, right? I go for the big hug with Bill. And a couple of guys come out. We do some high fives, whatever. I meet up with my daughter and my wife after the game. My daughter says to me, you blew off Tom Brady on national TV. I'm like, what are you talking about? I ran for Bill. Tom came out for a high five. I ran right by him. And so we st that kind of was the start of people, blow they did a whole montage of people blowing off Tom with high fives after that. So, you know, I always tell the story because it was Bill Belichick's way. You know, I had a long professional career, but it was his way to get me to be a part of the team. The following year, he signed Vinny Testaverde. Ted, uh, Vinny. Vinny threw a touchdown pass that season as a backup for Tom, which set a record for him. He had a knack for getting everybody involved. And that's what leaders do. Leaders get everyone involved, make everyone feel a part of it. And I don't care if it's the business world, sports. I know with, with the kids that are here today, academics is a big part of this too. And we're not gonna all be professional athletes. We may not have division one scholarships. We may not, but whatever it is, Find what motivates you on a daily basis. I've been told I was too small and too short since I can ever remember, since eight years old. I had Nick Saban say it to me when he was recruiting me. I had guys from Ohio State say it to me when they were recruiting me. Four years later, I won the Heisman Trophy. 21 years later, I was still playing professional football. You know what you have inside of you. You know what you're capable of. And I don't care if it's sports, the business world, academics, whatever direction you go. But the key is to get better every day and be motivated every day. You're never just punching that time clock. I'm going to wind it up because we are going to do a Q&A. Are we looking to the other side? Here we go. So thank you for listening to my spiel and my stories. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Great speech. And I'm still too short. 
no, no, we're not too short. We're going to bring out our own quarterback. I, I know. That's what I was and afraid here we of. Go. We got our own quarterback, opinion columnist at TC Palm, former number one pick of the Green Bay Packers at quarterback, Rich Campbell. See, this is this is what a quarterback's supposed to look like. Hey, good good talk. And I'm short again. You you've done this before. Once. Well, I, I got a few questions for you. It wasn't me. It was uh, the baby in it the was back. The baby? Okay. Okay. First, I'm, I'm going to start by testing your football knowledge. What do you know about former, former Green Bay Packers quarterback Rich Campbell? Take Cal. Take as much time as you'd like. <laughs> that he's standing in front of me. He went to Cal, and were you a first round draft? Yeah. You were a first round draft. Yeah. He's a first round draft. Back in the day, people. 11th round. There used to be 15 rounds, and, all right? And he, and he was the Heisman Trophy winner. I was a Heisman Trophy candidate before the season began, my senior year. Yeah. Anything so, else? Well, I, so, so I'm a 14th round, or whatever I was. So I didn't want to take the risk of waiting around and see where I ended up in the NFL. I signed in a new league called the USFL with Donald Trump was my boss. Who knew? <laughs> All right. What what are fluty flakes and how can I get some? <laughs> They're right there. We were talking some buddies of mine that were on product placement with all the sitcoms. Used to get them on the shelves of all the episodes of Friends and uh, Everyone Loves Raymond and be watching TV. There's a fluty flakes box on top of the fridge. Yeah, don't try to eat those. They're about 20 years old. But actually, that started as a fundraiser for my foundation for autism. We raised, we sold over six million boxes and raised over a million and a half dollars strictly wow, from fantastic. the fantastic. That's fantastic. They were, hey, they were pretty good, too. They were like Frosted Flakes, but like crunchier. Just eat them right out of the box as a snack. But I got tired of it. I never got tired of Frosted Flakes. I got tired of those after about two months. Former NFL commentator John Madden once said of this gentleman standing next to me, inch for inch, Doug Flutie in his prime was the best quarterback of his generation. Doug, what made you such a great quarterback? I was short. <laughs> I think some of the things I was talking about, my, my, my motivation and drive, I, and I just played the game instinctively. And play. Everyone was telling me I was too short to play. The, you know, you have to check protection, see your hot read, get the ball. I'm like, why am I throwing hot when they blitz and we can't block them? And the tight end turns around. I'm throwing the ball through an unblocked guy to a guy standing behind him. And I'm 5'10". I'm like, why don't I just throw it over here? I'll drift away from this guy and I'll throw the ball over. So I always found ways of doing things that worked for me. And a lot of times I didn't even realize, like the coaches on Monday, you gotta have a great game, but on Monday they'd rip me apart on the film because I'm drifting or I'm sliding a little bit and I'm not taking the proper steps. And you know what, the ball was out in time and in rhythm and I hit the receiver for the completion. And it was just these little things I was doing because of my height to find a window to throw the ball, to slide away from pressure. And I didn't even, you know, it wasn't a conscious thing I was doing, it was just an instinctive thing. This guy's coming here, I'm drifting away, I get the completion over there. Hmm. So I don't know, I was just, um, I think football was fun for me more than anything. Hmm. Yeah, you could see that when you played. Uh, you spoke glowingly of uh, Patriots quarterback, Tom Brady. Um, Another tall guy, six foot five. So I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask, uh, what, what are your thoughts on Deflategate? I think, it, Honestly, I think it's the biggest joke I've ever, for three years, two and a half years, there, the media harps on one pound of air pressure in a football on a cold weather game. Instead of all the felonies that go on in the NFL, uh, HGH, uh, 
performance enhancing drug, you name it, right? That comes and goes, oh, the guy got a slapped. A concussion button. problem. Yeah. yeah, okay, oh, this guy, oh, slap yeah. him on the wrist. He'll be back in four weeks. He'll still go to the Pro Bowl and win defensive MVP of the year. You know, instead, in a cold weather game where the pressure is going to be down anyway, maybe Tom kept them on the bottom end and it's a cold day and they're another pound lighter. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it just, it amazed me because it was Tom Brady, because it was the Patriots, because it was a team that wins, they made a big deal out of it. Hmm. No, I don't have an opinion on that at all, do no, I? No, you don't. When was the Flutie Brothers Band formed? Oh my gosh. Back in college, my brother and I used to play. I played drums, my brother played guitar. Um, guys used to come over and jam with us all the time. And, you know, we weren't, I didn't think we were very good at all, but we'd always jam in the basement. After about five, six years, um, the guys were saying, you know, this, this sounds a lot better than a lot of the bands we play with. We got, we got to start playing out. And so somewhere, 85, somewhere around 90, maybe somewhere around 90, we started playing out. And uh, now it's just been a fun thing where we play at Super Bowl every year at the tailgate party at the Super Bowl at the stadium. Uh, we've had the opportunity to play with bands like Marshall Tucker, Leonard Skinner. Uh, we we jam with the guys from Aerosmith, from Bon Jovi, you name it. And it's just been the great thing about being a musician or playing the drums. You don't get hurt and you don't lose. End of story. And even if you have a bad night, they don't really know. <laughs> you, you and I would both agree that coaches can have a, a tremendous influence on the lives of young athletes. I know there are several coaches here uh, supporting their players this evening. Uh, last question for you here. What's the most influential thing a coach said to you along the way? I was, and we didn't rehearse it, but as soon as you say that, it comes to me. I was, at, I was a sophomore in high school, and I went to this quarterback receiver football camp. And I don't even remember, Fallon was his last name. I don't even know where he coached or whatever. He said one, one thing to us was the, the, about getting better every day. He said, you know, you live on the East Coast. Once you go to bed, there's somebody out on the West Coast still getting better that's working out. <laughs> And I don't know, honestly, you know, it sounds so much, there's been, I couldn't tell you how many times I got up out of bed and went for a run and came huh. back. And it was hmm. just, it was an attitude more than anything. Hmm. But the inf most influential coach was Tom Coughlin, huh. who ended up being with the Giants. Tom, huh. Jacksonville Jaguars, Tom Coughlin, uh, New York Giants. He was my offensive coordinator in college. Huh. And he taught me more football in the years that I spent with him than all the other coaches combined. Huh. No doubt about it. Hey, thank you, sir. Another round of applause, Doug Flutie. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Best of luck to all of you. Doug, uh, before you go here, we just wanna show our appreciation here. Um, take a step right out here, please. Uh, maybe I'll bring your mic. We'll bring your mic. And uh, uh, I present this check, $6,000 uh, to the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation. And Doug, uh, we know uh, this is where your heart is at, and uh, it's very special. We just want to make sure you understand how much we appreciate you coming here tonight and sharing some time with us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Foundation for Autism in my son Dougie Jr.'s name. Uh, that's what the Flutie Flakes were all about. We raised over a million towards that. And guys, if I can, you know, we're all going to get caught up in whatever our career is, and we, we have the blinders on. And for me, it was, I had blinders on about football for years. And all of a sudden, my son was diagnosed with autism. And I believe it was around 1992, 93. And all of a sudden, you get in this world of fundraising and giving and caring about other people. And it was very enlightening for me. And I encourage all of you, at some point in your career, it'll happen. Some point along the way, uh, you know, we're all here together to take care of each other. So think about it down the road. Thank you. Thank you, Doug Flutie, and thank you, Rich Campbell. Very good speech. Okay, we're gonna get on to some of these other awards here, and I'd like our 52 finalists from TC Sports Awards to stand. I know you, and I'd like anyone else that would like to stand right now. We're gonna take a little, just quick break, stretch your legs if you'd like. Uh, 
I'd like to hit our sponsors one more time. Jetsons, Florida Power and Light, Florida Atlantic University, Harbor Community Bank, Codwell Bankers Paradise, the St. Lucie Mets, Treasure Coast Sports Commission, Nis Air, GHO Homes, Sunrise Theater, and St. Lucie Public Schools. This is directed to our 52 finalists. We all know how it works. Only one's going to get up here to win the award, but don't for a minute, like Bob Brunges said in the beginning, forget what got you here. To be here and to be one of the two finalists in your sports is a terrific accomplishment. And you ought to take that as you go forward. A lot of you are seniors and use that in your life. You've accomplished a lot and you should be proud of being here tonight. Okay, to give our awards, we're gonna bring out the hardest working multimedia sports journalist there is, John Santucci. I have a box of Flutie Flakes, by the way, <clears throat> unopened, and I don't plan on opening it now. Um, let's hand out some hardware. We ready? Here we go. Finalists for Boys Bowler of the Year are Martin County senior Trevor Main, who had a 215 average and helped the Tigers win the district championship, and Lincoln Park Academy senior Kenneth Merrick. who had a 214 average and was the District 12 individual champion. And the winner is Kenneth Merrick, Lincoln Park Academy. In addition to his outstanding season, Kenneth bowled a perfect game at the state tournament. All right, the finalists for Girls Bowler of the Year are Fort Pierce Westwood Jr., Samantha Dewin. She had a 185 average and qualified for the state tournament as an individual. And Lincoln Park Academy Jr., Emily Passanante, who brought her whole family. She had a 194 average and helped Lincoln Park finish as the state runner-up. And the winner is Emily Passanante, Lincoln Park Academy. Emily had the best average on the Treasure Coast of any lady in 2016. All right. The finalists for Boys Cross Country Runner of the Year for the second year in a row. These guys are the best. Pine School senior Chase Island, who had a season best time of 16 minutes, 15 seconds, and was the class 1A state runner up. And Lincoln Park Academy senior Caleb Potter. who had a personal best time of 15 minutes, eight seconds, and was the class 2A champion. And the winner is, once again, Caleb Podorf, Lincoln Park Academy. <laughs> Caleb had the best time of any cross country runner in the state in 2016. That is three consecutive awards for Lincoln Park, so we are renaming the rest of our awards the Lincoln Park Sports Awards. No, I'm just joking, football's coming up. Hey, hey, whoa. Lincoln Park has not lost since 1969, so just keep that in mind. All right, here we go. Finalists for Girls Cross Country Runner of the Year. Again, for the second year in a row. Pine School Junior, Claire Barber. She had a season best time of 19 minutes, 47 seconds, and finished 24th in Class 1A. And Sebastian River senior, Sierra Gallier, 
who had a personal best time of 19 minutes, 38 seconds, and finished 36th in class 3A. And the winner is Sierra Gallier, Sebastian River High School. Sierra had the fastest time of any girls runner on the Treasure Coast in 2016. The finalists for Offensive Player of the Year in Football are Vero Beach's Mike and Mike Show, Senior Quarterback Mike Dean, who threw for 3,032 yards, 33 touchdowns, and added seven rushing touchdowns. And Senior Wide Receiver Michael Smith, who has a fan in the front row, Caught 66 passes for 1,556 yards and 26 touchdowns. And the winner is, from Vero Beach, Michael Smith. Michael broke the area records for receiving yards and touchdowns in a season. Two records I thought would never be broken. All right. Finalists for Defensive Player of the Year in football are Vero Beach senior linebacker Patrick Moody. Had 125 tackles and three fumble recoveries. And Sebastian River senior defensive back Wayne Parks. I know where his family's sitting. He had 81 tackles and seven interceptions. And the winner is Wayne Parks, Sebastian River High School. touchdowns this year, four of them coming on defense. So now your brother can't tell you you don't have one of those. Good job, man. All right. The finalists for Boys Golfer of the Year are Pine School Junior Garrett Barber, who averaged, yeah, there you go. He averaged 34 strokes per nine holes and set the school's nine and 18 hole records. And his teammate, Pine School senior Prescott Butler, who averaged 37 strokes per nine holes and set the school's regional tournament record. And the winner is, from the Pine School, Prescott Butler. Prescott was the medalist in the regional tournament where he shot a 68 and helped his team get to the state tournament. Finalist for Girls Golfer of the Year. Again, second year in a row for these two. Martin County senior, Holly Davenport. She averaged 37 strokes per nine holes and, would, and was the district tournament medalist. And Vero Beach senior, Mary Kate Hiller. She averaged 35 strokes per nine holes and was the co-medalist at the district and regional tournaments. And the winner is Mary Kate Hiller, Vero Beach High School. tied for 10th in the Class 3A state tournament. Next award is Boys Swimmer and Diver of the Year, which is sponsored by Coldwell Banker Paradise. And the finalists are... 
Okay. St. Edward's School senior Andrew Brown. Placed eighth in class 1A in both the 53 and 100 fly. And Lincoln Park Academy freshman Jonathan Garrity. Who is the class 2A runner up in the one meter dive. And the winner is Jonathan Garrity, Lincoln Park Academy. Jonathan was the district and regional diving champion this fall. Finalists for Girls Swimmer and Diver of the Year, again, a second year in a row, are Vero Beach sophomore Elizabeth Richardson. She finished fourth in class 4A in the 100 free and sixth in the 50 free. And Martin County sophomore Delaney Simpkins, who is third in class 3A in the 50 free and seventh in the 100 free. The winner is Elizabeth Richardson, Vero Beach High School. Elizabeth was the Girls Swimmer of the Year in 2016 as well. Finalists for Volleyball Player of the Year are Jensen Beach senior outside hitter Snowy Burnham, who had 321 kills and 115 service points. And South Fork senior outside hitter Lindsey Glenn, who had 194 kills and helped the Bulldogs win their first state title. And your winner is... Snowy Burnham, Jensen Beach High School. Snowy owns the school record for kills with 1,055. All right, let's head into the winter sports. Next award is Boys Basketball Player of the Year, which is sponsored by St. Lucie County Schools. And the finalists are Okeechobee senior forward Shakoy Farrell, who averaged 21 points and 9.5 rebounds per game. And Treasure Coast sophomore guard Tyreek Thompson, who averaged 15.4 points per game and led the Titans to the regional semifinals. And the winner is Tyreek Thompson, Treasure Coast High School. Tyreek shot better than 58% from the field and 43% from long distance. Finalists for Girls Basketball Player of the Year are Fort Pierce Westwood, senior Renaya Burr. She averaged 20 points and five assists per game. And Vero Beach senior guard, Jordan Wade, who averaged 14 points per game and led the Fighting Indians to the regional championship game. And the winner is Renaya Burr, Fort Pierce Westwood High School. Renaya was the area's leading scorer this season. Next award is Boys Soccer Player of the Year, which is sponsored by Harbor Community Bank. And the finalists are Vero Beach senior goalkeeper Wesley Alexander had 161 saves in five shutouts. And Fort Pierce Central sophomore forward Kevin Sarin 
scored 20 goals and had six assists. And the winner is Wesley Alexander, Vero Beach High School. Wesley had three shutouts in the postseason as Vero Beach helped reach the Final Four for the first time in program history. Next award is Girls Soccer Player of the Year, which is sponsored by Nice Air. And the finalists are Vero Beach senior defender Kristen Moore. Scored six goals and helped lead the Fighting Indians to the regional championship game. And South Fork senior forward Chloe Zamella, who scored 28 goals and also helped the Bulldogs reach their regional championship game. Winner is Chloe Zamella, South Fork High School. <laughs> Chloe was the All Area Player of the Year last year as well. finalists for all area girls weightlifter of the year are St. Edward's School senior Kendra Mathis who is the class 1A state runner up in the 101 pound division and Vero Beach junior Verlicia Scarlett who is the class 2A runner up in the 199 pound division and the winner is Kendra Mathis St. Edward's School Kendra finished with a total weight of 250 pounds at the state championship. All right, here's a first for you. The finalists for all area wrestler from the year of the year are from the same house. So let's see how this car ride goes. Okay, Jensen Beach. Finalists are Jensen Beach, 145 pound senior, Kyle Kirkham, who placed third in his weight class in class 2A. And Jensen Beach, 113 pound sophomore, Wyatt Kirkham, who also placed third in his weight class in class 2A. And the winner is from Jensen Beach, wrestle for. Let's go. Now, um, Kyle Kirkham, Jensen Beach High School. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kyle won 57 matches in 2017 and is a three-time state place winner. now on to the spring. Finalist for Flag Football Player of the Year. Again, a second row, second time in a row for these two ladies. Jensen Beach quarterback, J.C. Grosso, who threw for more than 2,400 yards and led the Falcons to the Class 1A Final Four for the first time. And Martin County quarterback, defensive back extraordinaire, Elizabeth Moberg who had eight interceptions and led the Tigers to the district championship. And the winner is J.C. Grosso, Jensen Beach High School. J.C. accounted for 36 touchdowns during the regular season, 27 passing, nine rushing. Finalists for Boys Lacrosse Player of the Year are St. Edward's School Senior Long Stick Midfielder, that's such a long position title, and Defender Austin Shepherds. He had 11 goals and 5 assists, and 
his teammate, St. Edward's School senior attackman Chase Stokes, who had 46 goals and 13 assists. And the winner is from St. Edward's, Chase Stokes. Chase scored, despite being injured, Chase scored three goals, including the game winner in the final period of the District 23 championship game. Finalists for Girls Lacrosse Player of the Year are Vero Beach junior midfielder Sydney Bracken, who had 30 goals and 19 assists and Martin County senior attacker, Savannah Steckler, who had 83 goals and 20 assists. And the winner is Sydney Bracken, Vero Beach High School. Sydney led the area with 123 draw controls this season. Finalists for Softball Player of the Year are Treasure Coast senior pitcher Caitlin McHugh. She went 12 and 5 with a 0.78 ERA. And John Carroll Catholic senior pitcher Ashley Rosado. She went 11 and 5 with a 1.76 ERA during the regular season. And the winner is. The state champ, Ashley Rosado, John Carroll Catholic High School. You may have noticed that by what we said, Ashley led the Golden Rams to the Class 3A state title last week. The finalists for Boys Tennis Player of the Year are a little excitement. St. Lucie West Centennial senior Tommy Martinez, who was the Class 4A state individual runner-up, and Lincoln Park Academy senior Tyler Rios, who was the Class 2A individual state runner-up. And the winner is Tommy Martinez, St. Lucie West Centennial High School. Tommy went 17-1 and one and was undefeated until the state championship match. The finalists for Girls Tennis Player of the Year are Vero Beach Senior Virginia Besh, who went 11-1 and, and helped the Fighting Indians reach the state tournament and Treasure Coast senior Olivia Wallman, who won a combined seven and two in singles and doubles play. And the winner is Virginia Bash, Vero Beach High School. Virginia is a four year state qualifier and went undefeated during the postseason. Whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop her, stop her. Wait, listen, hold on. In addition to that nice piece of hardware, you have been selected as the recipient of a $1,000 sports award scholarship presented by GHO Homes. Congratulations. All right. Right. The finalists for Boys Track Athlete of the Year. All right. right, there's three of them, because they all won two gold medals at state, so great track season. The finalists are Sebastian River Senior, Jerez Parks, who was the Class 3A champion in the discus and the shot put. 
Lincoln Park Academy senior Caleb Podorf, who is the class 2A champion in the 16 and 3200 meters. And Sebastian River junior Quayshawn Watson, who is the class 3A champion in the long jump and the triple jump. And the winner is, because unfortunately we can only have one, third year in a row, Jerez Park, Sebastian River High School. Jerez had the longest throws in the, in, of anyone in the state in the shot put and the discus this year. Finalists for Girls Track Athlete of the Year are Vero Beach Junior, Shania Jenkins, who is a state qualifier in the 100 meters and the long jump, and South Fork Junior, Emma Slinkman, who plays fourth in Class 3A in the pole vault. And the winner is Shania Jenkins, Vero Beach High School. Shania had the area's best time in the 100 and the best long jump and was number two in the 200 meters. One more, right? Eh? Baseball finalists. This award is sponsored by, guess who? The St. Lucie Mets. And the finalists are Vero Beach junior pitcher Hunter Cooley, who went eight and two and with an ERA under one, and Jensen Beach senior catcher Calvin Greenfield. Hit better than 450 and averaged an RBI per game during the regular season. And the winner is Calvin Greenfield, Jensen Beach High School. Calvin had a career night against Martin County during the regular season, going four for five with a home run and eight RBIs. All right, thank you. Congratulations to all 26 winners, and thanks for all 52 finalists showing up tonight. We sure do appreciate it. Our next award is a new one. It's directed to our coaches, and I personally want to thank every coach on the Treasure Coast. We have a tremendous group that reports their scores and, and helps us out a great deal, and it's a great honor to be able to give an award to the overall female sports coach and the male sports coach. And to do that, and we're gonna bring out the greatest outdoors writer of all time, Ed Keller, who's gonna give the awards. Thanks, Mike. You know, we'd like to recognize those that, that truly define what it means to love the sport, love the game. These awards are presented by Florida Atlantic University uh, just with that, that purpose in mind. They're going above and beyond, these athletes, these coaches rather. They're dedicating endless hours to the sport. They're the first one in the gym, the last to leave, spending late nights making practice plans, strategizing and fostering teamwork. Yes, these are coaches. High school sports are simply not possible without their time, care, and support. All of us in attendance still remember that one coach that pushed us to become the player that we are today. Would all the coaches in the audience tonight please stand up? Let's give these folks a round of applause along with Florida Atlantic University for recognizing their efforts. Now without further ado, I'm gonna start off by introducing 
the Male Sports Coach of the Year Award. This coach uh, had a very special year. Uh, guided his team to uh, a third place finish in Class 3A in track and field, and had two athletes combined to win four gold medals at the state track and field meet. It's Tyrone Perry from Sebastian River High School. Congratulations, Tyrone. Now for the Female Sports Coach of the Year Award. I talked to uh, one of the parents who happens to have uh, their, their child plays the sport uh, for this coach. And I said, what's, what's one thing about this coach that really kind of, if you're going to characterize you know, what she can do for a team? And he said, confidence. And that's one thing about coaches that they give so much to these kids to instill confidence. That's what sports does for, for all of us athletes. Uh, this coach guided her team to their school's first state championship in a team sport in women's sports this year. Uh, it was uh, South Forks High School's Jessica Warren, the volleyball coach there. Congratulations. Thank you all the coaches. We really appreciate all the hard work they do and all the help they give us. We've got another new award this year. It's called I Am Sport. It's sponsored by Nike and one of our big premier sponsors. And I'd like to bring out opinion audience engagement editor at TC Palm and regional social media leader for USA Today, Today Network in Florida, Eve Samples. Thanks, Mike. Quick public service announcement on the social media end of my job. If you're out there tweeting or on Instagram, use hashtag TCPrepZone. We also have a Snapchat filter in the house, so check it out. So let's get to this uh, third to last award. We're very excited to announce our area's first ever I Am Sport Award presented by Nike. This award recognizes a high school student athlete who has shown commitment to helping kids get physically active. You all, meaning student athletes, coaches, parents, members of our community, nominated and voted for the most deserving recipients. So let's get to our finalists. They are Jaslyn Edwards, Jensen Beach High School. Joey Garcia Jr., Fort Pierce Central. Justine Jocks, Martin County High School. And the winner is the nominee tonight with the best last name for this award, Justine Jocks. Congratulations, Justine. Okay, just two awards to go. They just happen to be the biggest two. And to have uh, some help with those awards, I'm, I'm honored to bring out the CEO of Jetsons, Trey Topner. He's going to help us give those awards, and John Santucci is going to give a helping hand. So take it away, guys, for the top female and male athlete of the year. All right. Again, helping me out is Trey Thoffner, president of Jensen. We appreciate him being here. First, we're going to start with our male athlete of the year. He simply is the fastest distance runner in the state of Florida. 
He won three gold medals this year, winning cross country, the 1600 meters and the 3200 meters, and posted the best time of any runner in the state in every event. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2016-17 Male Athlete of the Year, Caleb Podorf, Lincoln Park Academy. still the stat of the year for me. Caleb ran the 3200, I think it was, the first day at state, and won by 12 seconds. And at the end, he said, yeah, I slowed down because nobody else was running with me. Good night. I slowed down too because I can't breathe anymore. Um, female athlete of the year. I think we had a real good idea that she was going to be a special one when she was a national finalist for the NFL's punt, pass, and kick competition. Her mom knows who it is. This year, she was a first team all area selection in girls soccer and a finalist for all area flag football player of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2016-17 female athlete of the year, Elizabeth Moberg, Martin County. <laughs> So, that ends the awards tonight. We appreciate everyone coming tonight. We're very honored to have all these athletes here. We would ask that Caleb and Elizabeth hang around for a minute, come up here to the stage. We all hope you have a safe night on the way home, and thanks again for all your support.